Hello again, everyone. This is Kevin. Uh, today, I'm going to show you uh, with the D3 Disguise server how to interface a MIDI controller. Uh, for this exercise, I'm using a Korg Nano Pad 2. I'm sorry, Korg Nano Control 2. Uh, but this works with any media server, <laughs> any MIDI controller whatsoever. So uh, let's let's do this thing. Gotta love that video. So once again, I'm using a Korg uh, Nano Control 2. Now one note, whenever you plug a controller into Disguise, um, Disguise, you do have to restart the software. So if the software is already running and you plug a controller in, you do have to restart the software for it to recognize the controller. Uh, but I plugged my controller in first and then I launched Disguise. So with a controller, um, a MIDI controller, DMX controller, OSC device, we can do quite a few things. Um, first, we're gonna build it as a device and control properties on the layer. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a new layer. And I do have another video on my channel of the general overview of Disguise. So if you wanna watch that, uh, please do. So I have a video here of George Costanza and I want to control the properties of the layer through my controller, through my faders, my knobs, my buttons. All the good stuff. Uh, once we do that, then later in the video, I'm going to show you how to play, pause, volume, and all that good stuff. So if you want to skip ahead to that, uh, go right ahead. <clears throat> so uh, first, I need to create this as a device. So I'm going to right click on my devices at the top of the screen. And where it says devices plus, I'm going to hit the plus button and create a new device. I'm going to create one called MIDI because I'm very original with my naming. I'm gonna call it MIDI controller. And here are the types of devices that work plug and play. Agile camera, Barco, uh, OSC, DMX, uh, blah, blah, blah. But we're gonna look for a MIDI device. M-I-D-I, multi-interface digital, multi-instrument digital, multi digital interface, yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's MIDI. So this has now created the MIDI controller into my device list, but it's not set up yet. So I need to configure the device. So I'm gonna right click the device and it opens up this little tiny window for my MIDI controller. Uh, fun fact, if I'm gonna hold control and click the top to pin this to my window, and now I can right click on this MIDI controller window. And I hit edit, this opens up the parameters. So here I could set the MIDI input, MIDI output channels, the I.O. mode, so it's a MIDI input device, MIDI output device. I am sending MIDI from the controller to the D3, thus it's going to be a MIDI in device. So I hit MIDI in, and sure enough, here is Nano Control 2. At this point, whatever your controller is should be displaying, otherwise once again, try restarting the software, and then of course make sure the drivers are installed on your computer. At this point, if I start hitting buttons on my controller, I'm pressing random faders, we do see that it's recognizing that controls are coming in. So here's a little knob. We see that it is showing that there is a level of control coming in. Great, now time to start building a controller. So on a controller, any type of unique control parameter is referred to as a control set. So my controller has faders, has dials and it has buttons. So a fader would be a control set. A dial would be a control set. A button would be a control set. Thus, I have three control sets. Uno, dos, three. Now I need to set these control sets. So I'm gonna right click on control set one and I could say, what type is it? Is it gonna be a dial, a button, a slider, a CC button, a note button, keys or pitch bend? I'm gonna do my faders first. So I'm gonna select slider, I'm gonna say how many of them. Uh, my controller has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but I'm just gonna do four. One, two, three, four. And notice how four faders now pop up on my controller interface. I'm gonna do the same for MIDI control set two, I'll do my dials, same thing, I'll do four of them. One, two, three, four, and then I will do buttons and I'm gonna do, I'll do six, oh no. I'll do four, why, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now I need to do what's called training the controller. 
So I have my virtualized controller, I have my physical controller, but I need to make them talk with each other. So I'm gonna go one at a time and right click on the button here and hit the train button. When I hit train, I'm then going to move the physical fader and it's gonna record those values and basically teach D3 what buttons I wanna use. So here's fader number one. Fader two, so I'm sliding these up after I'm hitting train. Fader three and fader four. Cool. Now note, as I move this first fader, all the other values are coming in because right now it's just kind of flooding it with MIDI information. But uh, once I start training these, that'll all isolate. All right, so now I'm hitting train, I'm turning my dials. I'm turning them all the way up, all the way down, just to prove that I have full control. Great. And now I'm going to do my buttons. Button. 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 And button. Great. So now I have all my controls here. So if I move the, the controller, these buttons will stay. So now, what can I do with this controller? So, on a layer, any property that can be keyframed for the most part can be controlled with an external controller. So if I were to go to default and go to brightness or opacity, I can control this. To do so, I'm gonna use the Alt key, A-L-T, the Alt key on my keyboard. I'm gonna hold Alt and click from the virtual button to the parameter I want to control. Thus, I'm going to hold Alt and draw from this fader to the blend section. And now, as I move my fader, the brightness is changing on the layer. As I mentioned, just about anything can be adjusted. So if I want to do scale for some reason, same idea, I hold the uh, Alt key, draw from the fader to the parameter, and now I can change the zoom. Yay! So this works great on the volume or audio of a video channel, the brightness, the color parameters, really anything I want. Uh, here's a fun one. I'm going to take two dials. And I'm going to put them to the XY of the color palette. And now I can kind of VJ the, uh, the colors. Isn't that cute? All right. So now if you want to get rid of these controls, what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on the control value and note that it's technically what's called an expression, which is a formula that tells it what it's doing. It's going to scale, MIDI device, MIDI controller, and then the scale parameters. So if I wanna undo the control, I can select these and delete them. And now the control has been released. Now one important note, all of these controls are only for the layer itself. So if I were to create a new video layer, uh, it's actually gonna have a new set of controls. So keep that in mind for your workflow that these controls are now independent for each layer. Great. So that's how you can control parameters with a controller. Now, the other big thing is what if I want to play? I want to pause. I want to go to the previous section, next section. As we remember in fundamentals class, uh, anything that can control the timeline is considered to be what's called a transport. So transport would be where we would set our time code, um, schedulers, set lists, um, things of that nature. So if I want my MIDI controller to play my timeline. That would then be a transport. So we have two types of transports. We have what's referred to as a remote transport and a local transport. A remote transport has to be engaged with the transport engagement, and it typically is reserved for control sets that are going to be away from you. For example, maybe you're backstage and you want to give control to the lighting console in front of house. A local transport, however, is going to be localized to you, the server operator, and it will always be live regardless of the engagement status. So I'm going to build my MIDI control as a local transport. Plus, and same idea, new event transport, I'm going to call it MIDI 
controller, super original naming. I'm going to do event transport MIDI note. Event transport MIDI note. Now you're going to see some pretty uh, similar controls here. Uh, MIDI in is going to be nano control 2. On MIDI note jump, I want to play to the end of the section. And now personality, here's going to be all the controls that are already built in that I just have to train. So if I see um, next section, for example, Going to hit the train button and now I can hit next section. I'll do previous section train and now I can go previous section. If I want to do play I can do that as well. I'll do play to the end of the section. Play and now hitting that again will pause it and then hitting stop. Great. So I now have a few different commands here. Uh, here we have transport brightness, so I'm going to train this to another fader. And now I have my overall brightness being dictated as well. Very cool. So the last thing that I want to show you is how to actually jump to a specific cue with a MIDI controller. Um, so one important note, to actually jump to a MIDI cue, we have to utilize a MIDI note. To know what type of MIDI you're coming in, if you um, right click on your MIDI controller, the MIDI interface at the top of the screen, and then left click the controller, it's going to show you the parameters coming in. Right now I'm using what's referred to as a controller channel, a CC value. MIDI cues, however, only work on MIDI notes. So if your controller is only doing CC, might not work for you. Now, the core, whole thing about the cork, the cork nano control too, is I can actually change between a CC and a note value. So I'm going to open up um, the free software called Chord Control Editor. I got this from the Chord website, and this is, allows me to dictate what my controller is doing. And sure enough, as we see, all the buttons here are set to CC buttons. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a few of them, and I'm going to change this to be a note uh, value. Oh, that's the fader. So right now it's a control change. I'm going to have it be a note button. So I'm just doing the bottom row here to show you. Note button. Note button. Note button. Cool. So I have four buttons. And now I'm going to send this to the controller. Oh, no. I bet it's because disguise is open right now. Let's try it one more time. OK. So I'm going to save, disguise, and exit, and then I'm going to do this. All right, let's try that again. Communication, right, scene data. There we go. Okay, so basically I was trying to change the parameters of the controller while the controller was open in disguise, and uh, no bueno. Ah, great. Cool, so I still have control. So let me go ahead and build another queue just to say that I did. I'll do new layer, video, um, sure. It's just the generic content from the training website. So I have three sections. I can, of course, jump between the sections, but what if I want to jump to a particular point as a queue jumper? I can do that. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to go to my MIDI device. Oops, which is you know, right up here, my MIDI left click and I'm going to see what the note value is. So right here I can see that when I'm pressing this button it's giving me note E4 index 64. So note E4 it relates to 64. So 64 is going to be the value that I'm going to use for my cue. So on the section I want I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to the tag, I'm going to change from time code to MIDI, I'm going to put in 64. So now if, if I play and hit that Q button, sure enough, I'm now at Q64. Let me try another one. So this next button here is 65. Well, how convenient. Typically they go in numerical order. Uh, let me make this first Q for Costanza. I'll do this as 65. And now I can be playing Q64 and jump. Oh. You know what I didn't do? I didn't change the, uh, ah, I put in the wrong place. Burp, 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 burp. So 65, here we 
go. Press play and two, one, two, 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 two. Nice. Look at me go. Great. So once again, that's just a few um, setups using a Korg Nano 2 control with disguise. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please uh, subscribe, like, <laughs> whatever all that stuff is. And uh, thanks again for watching.